What is up guys? I'm Josh Weissman and today we're going to talk about gyoza, aka pot stickers, aka Japanese pan fried dumplings. I mean this is everybody's favorite thing to get at a Japanese restaurant so you're welcome. <laughs> Now, before we get to making these, we need to talk a little bit about what gyoza is. Now, gyoza, although sort of a Japanese word, sort of a Japanese thing, served in Japanese restaurants, it's mostly a Chinese-derived food. You can go and buy your own gyoza wrappers. They'll already be rolled out and in their own circular shape. But I'm gonna tell you now that if you make it from scratch, it is going to be way better than the frozen stuff that you are probably getting at a restaurant. It is so much more satisfying to make stuff from scratch don't be a bitch, trust me. Now first you're gonna start with your gyoza dough, which is ridiculously easy. So you're gonna start with 310 grams of all-purpose flour, which is about two cups. Next, heat up 150 milliliters or 150 grams of water. You're just bringing it up to the boil. The second it comes to a boil, bring it off. To the just boiled water, you're gonna add a generous pinch of salt, and then you're just gonna pour that hot water directly into your flour. Now when you're mixing, make sure to splash as much flour all over your work surface as possible. That's a joke, don't do that. Now, once your dough sort of starts to come together, you're gonna wanna start to use your hands. Now, if it's too hot for you, you can wait a little bit, but you know, I have asbestos hands, I guess, so. Now, as I was lightly kneading this, I noticed that my dough actually needed a tiny bit more hydration than it did last time, so it may just vary. Just make sure that you're adding water one tablespoon at a time until the dough comes completely together. You don't wanna overhydrate it. Now, once your dough comes together, turn it over on a work surface and knead it for about five to eight minutes or until it starts to become smooth. Then you're gonna lightly dust a bowl with cornstarch, drop your dough in there, cover it with a damp towel, and let it sit for about an hour. Now, while that dough is sitting, we're gonna prepare our filling. So you're gonna take a quarter head of cabbage, remove the core, and slice it as thinly as you can into little ribbons. Once your cabbage is sliced, simply transfer it to a medium-sized bowl, season it to taste with salt, and massage and squeeze the cabbage. Don't be afraid to squeeze it too hard, really get in there. We're looking to soften it up and have it release moisture. Here's a fun way to peel ginger, use a spoon. Yeah, scrape the ginger using a spoon and you will peel the ginger perfectly. Next, you're gonna thinly slice three quarters of a cup of green onion. Next, in a medium-sized bowl, you're gonna add one pound of ground pork. To that bowl, we're gonna add our softened cabbage. Make sure to squeeze out that excess water before adding the cabbage to the pork. Thinly sliced green onion, two cloves of garlic grated, a one and a half inch knob of ginger grated, two teaspoons of tamari. Then you're gonna wanna season pretty generously with salt. I actually under seasoned this a little bit when I made it, so make sure that you're seasoning it a little bit more than you usually would. Then just get all up in there and mix it with your hands. Make sure that you mix this really thoroughly. Now to shape our dough, slice your dough ball directly in half, roll each half into a one inch thick cylinder, and then wrap each cylinder in plastic wrap and let them rest for about 15 to 30 minutes. Now, while you're waiting for that, you're gonna make your gyoza sauce. You're gonna start with a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of tamari, a quarter cup rice vinegar, two teaspoons of mirin, which sounds fancy, but I swear you can find it at most grocery stores, one and a half teaspoons of sesame oil, and two teaspoons of honey. Now, if you're a spicy masochist, you can add a thinly sliced Thai chili to make the sauce spicier, but remember, we're gonna put chili oil on this. Add a half teaspoon of sesame seeds, whisk to combine, and there you go, gyoza sauce. Next, take one of your logs of your gyoza dough and divide it into 12 equal sized pieces. Don't be confused by the number of markers I put, I was a little confused. Now, as you're rolling your dough, I would recommend putting all the unrolled pieces of dough underneath a damp towel to prevent them from drying. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a gyoza wrapper, so start by rolling one of the portions of dough into a ball. Smush the ball down into a flat circle. Then using a rolling pin, you're going to roll and shape that disc into a larger disc that is, well, obviously thinner. Uh, the point of reference that I was using here was really just to make sure that I was rolling it large enough for my three inch circular cookie cutter to fit within that. As long as it's large enough for you to cut it with one of those, it should be thin enough. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention, dust with cornstarch as needed so it doesn't stick. Now, after that, you're gonna use a three inch circular cookie cutter to cut out a perfectly round circle out of that segment of dough. That's literally it. And just repeat that process with all of your dough balls, which should equate to about 24 to 25 gyoza wrappers. As you're finishing these, simply stack each gyoza wrapper on top of one another, dusting with cornstarch so that they do not stick together. Now to shape your gyoza. This will take you one or two gyoza in order to get right, but anyway, you're going to start with a nice Nice two teaspoon scoop of your meat mixture right smack dab in the center. Now make sure that you're not overfilling this. You want to make sure you can still completely enclose it without any of the meat mixture popping out. Next, you're going to wet the edges with the tip of your finger dipped in water so that the edges stick when you fold it. Now I'm going to slow this next clip down for you. So basically, you're going to sort of begin to fold your gyoza wrapper around the filling like a taco and on only one side of the wrapper, you're going to fold and crimp little crimps, like little crimps? little crimped edges sort of scalloped all the way across only one side and then simply you're just going to adhere both sides to each other because they'll both be wet so they should adhere pretty well and make sure that you seal it completely ensure the bottom is flat and form them into sort of like a half moon fortune cookie shape and repeat that process with all of your gyoza wrappers little crimping part it's really really easy to do it's not as hard as it looks you can skip this part entirely and just go ahead and close it like a taco but you know I mean I would really recommend doing the crimping. Now here are a few finished gyoza. I guarantee you you're gonna have meat left over. I actually ended up having quite a bit meat left over so you can always make a double batch of the dough and just make more gyoza or you can just save the pork for something else you know maybe make some pork meatballs or whatever you know be creative. Also I'm covering them with a damp towel so they don't dry out. You don't really have to do this if you're gonna cook them right away. Next you're gonna heat two tablespoons of oil in a large pan over medium high heat. Once the oil is hot and shimmering, you're gonna go ahead and add in your gyoza in a circular pattern all the way across the pan, making sure that they are not touching. Then you're just gonna leave them in the pan to sear for about two to three minutes or until the bottoms begin to brown and then you're gonna steam the dumplings. So now you're gonna take a quarter cup of water and add it directly to the pan. This is gonna generate a lot of steam, so please don't burn yourself. And then you're gonna immediately cover it with a lid. Now, uh, I only had foil, so I had to use foil because my cast iron pan doesn't have a lid. Please use a proper lid and don't burn your hands like I just did. I reduced the heat down a little closer to medium at this point and then I just let them steam for about three minutes. You don't really want any water left once the steam is done. So once the three minutes is up, is if there's any water left in the bottom, just turn the heat back up to medium high and reduce the water out until the bottoms are nice and crispy. You can always add a little bit more oil, maybe even some sesame oil to help crisp them back up if they need it. Also, you know they're done when the meat inside feels nice and firm and springy. And now there's really only one thing left to do. Serve these with that gyoza sauce that you made earlier and you're done, dude. And now, a word from our gyoza sponsor. All right, guys, and that is it. So who knew dumplings could be so freaking easy? I'll be honest with you, this is one of those recipes that when you're done making it and you f taste the first bite, it's just like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Before we end this video, I just wanna say one little thing. I'm gonna be putting out a lot more videos with different content and different types of stuff that I haven't really explored yet. So please give me your feedback and let me know what you're thinking. Uh, the comments seriously help me so much in developing the type of content that I'm producing. That way I can produce the content that you want and I know what you're thinking about the stuff that I'm doing because I do care, unless you're trolling me. In which case, I don't care, literally don't. People still comment on my old videos saying like, oh my gosh, it's so dark in this video. Oh, wow, good for you. Have you seen the most recent video that was posted like six months later? Thank you, sweetie, thank you. This is very long-winded, so I'm very sorry, but the other thing that I wanted to touch was that I feel like I haven't really been 100% myself in these videos. I'm not saying that I'm being fake, it's just I'm a little bit reserved because I don't want to scare anybody off because Joshy Washy has a potty mouth, and I, I don't know, I guess I felt like I needed to peel it back, but then again, I might as well just do it. And if nobody, if somebody doesn't like it, then they can just, you can just get out. So, you know, in other words, I'm just going to unapologetically be myself, produce the content that I want to produce, but also produce the content that you want, the recipes you want. Anyway, this is kind of just going to, this is just going to go on forever. So I'm just going to stop myself now. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week.